I'm from Texas, so I guess I need to do Texas style, right? Howdy, everybody. Uh, welcome to Texas. Uh, my name is Xi Jun Shi. I actually go by Jeff. Uh, I'm an assistant professor at Texas State University. Uh, so today I'm very excited to be in Dallas, in Texas. Uh, I'm going to present uh, some of the work we have done at Texas State uh, using uh, waste glass powder to uh, make uh, both geopolymer and uh, conventional Portland cement mortars. So before I do the presentation, I want to uh, clarify. Uh, my student, Moham, um, Marab Nohel, uh, he did all the work. I did not go to the lab at all. Uh, so he was my former master's student. He graduated during summer, and he's now a PhD student at UC Davis. Unfortunately, he cannot be here, so I feel he came in. Hopefully, I can do a, a good job. All right, so for today's presentation, uh, first, I, I will do introduction. Uh, give you guys some background objectives of uh, our study. Uh, then I will introduce the materials we, uh, we used and the test method we adopted. And then I'm going to show you guys the results. We are going to talk about fresh properties, mechanical properties, and also cracking potential by using uh, restrained uh, shrinkage ring. And, um, and I will make uh, conclusions. Uh, this is an overwhelming slide, I know. Uh, Actually, we wanted to make it overwhelming because the message is flying, uh, fly ash is facing out. Uh, because we, uh, we are shutting down the coal fired power plant uh, in the near future, we will no longer pro be producing new fly ash. Uh, we know our industry has been using class F fly ash for a long time. It's not, a, it's not only economical, but also make concrete more durable and uh, also contain long-term strength. Uh, so we need to find uh, maybe other ACMs to uh, replace fly ash. So here um, we listed a table summarizing uh, some of uh, commonly used ACMs, or, or, or I should say commonly investigated ACMs, because a lot of them have not been applied in the field. Uh, we have uh, the first speaker, Dr. Shen, talk about RADMA, right? Uh, so as you can see, we have a lot of uh, materials can potentially be used uh, as ACM. Uh, so here, I want to highlight the glass. When you look at the annual production, glass has about 100 uh, m ton uh, per year, so it's huge. Uh, and uh, But look at the, the, the lasso column. The recycling rate of the glass is only 26%. So there, we, we believe there's still good potentials of using uh, glass to recycle the glass. Uh, a little bit background about glass recycling. Uh, when I talk glass recycling, I mean uh, we recycle glass to make a new glass using the recycled materials, right? So talk about the recycling glass First, you need to gather a recycled glass, then you need to transport, you need to fully wash it, then you need to, to heat it at a very high temperature, which is more than 1,000 degrees Celsius. Um, then you need to remote and reproduce. Uh, and um, the second sentence you can see, actually, if you want to do the recycling process to make a new glass, you need a lot of energy and a lot of CO2 being emitted during the process. If you compare producing a uh, new glass with raw material, compare with recycling glass to make a new glass, actually you will find recycling process actually generates more CO2 emission compared to make glass from scratch, right? So that's why we perhaps it's not a very good strategy to recycle glass. So that's why we, we, we think of, we think, and a lot of people have already investigated using Glass powder can be a, a potential ACM for Portland cement concrete. Uh, and, but the challenge is that we need to ground the glass into very fine particle, and the glass is uh, relatively hard compared to stone, so it's not an easy job to glass uh, to ground the glass into very uh, fine particle. Uh, then uh, my student, Marab, he did a lot of literature review. Uh, he uh, 
uh, he collected some information regarding using glass powder as an ACM for ordinary, ordinary Portland cement concrete. And so basically, the, the results telling us uh, we can use glass powder up to maybe uh, maybe between like 20 to 30 percent to replace Portland cement. And if you ground glass into a very fine particle, uh, you will have strength improvement, you will have permeability reduction, and uh, you will not have a lot of uh, uh, concern about ASR. So that's uh, kind of uh, Aaron uh, made a, a kind of a conclusion from a uh, lot of uh, uh, studies. So for our research, we, uh, we uh, did both geopolymer system, we also did uh, the conventional Portland man based uh, system. And uh, we measured fresh and uh, volumetric uh, properties. We did uh, a lot of mechanical performance testing. And we also did a shrinkage and uh, cracking potential test using the ring test. Uh, all right, look at our materials. Uh, so for our band binder system, we use type 1, 2 cement as a conventional Portland cement. And we uh, use class F fly ash. Uh, we also use a GGBFS and also glass powder. So as I mentioned, um, grounding glass powder, glass into powder form is challenging. Uh, we did not do that in our lab. Instead, we purchased a commercialized product, which is uh, VCAS 200, and it is produced by Virtual Minerals. Uh, we only did a mortar test. Uh, we want to start with a mortar, then we can uh, move, uh, move, pr proceed to uh, to the concrete testing. Uh, for the our activators, we use a sodium silicate and a sodium hydroxide. Um, on the table, uh, on I guess on your right, left side, uh, it's uh, raw material properties for the glass powder. Uh, we took it directly from the website from the virtual mirror. Um, as you can see, the, the particles are very fine. And uh, on the right-hand side, it's a chemical composition of uh, cement, GB, GGBFS, flash, and glass powder, glass powder. As you can see, compare uh, glass powder with fly ash. You can see glass powder we used had a lot of uh, much higher uh, calcium content, and uh, it also has some uh, magnesium uh, content. Um, all right, regarding mixed design, as I mentioned, we only did a mortar test. Uh, we, uh, we did four different type of uh, mixtures. We did uh, two Portland cement-based mixtures and two geopolymer-based mixtures. Uh, okay, so, so in the second mixture, we replaced Portland cement with 25% glass powder. And uh, the third and the fourth are geopolymer mixtures. Uh, we uh, we we kept we keep we kept a GDBFS constant, but uh, for one mixture we add the same amount of fire ash as a precursor, and uh, uh, for the last mixture we add geo, uh, glass powder as a precursor. Uh, so we have four different types of mixtures. And uh, we use uh, sodium silicon and sodium hydroxide as one by one uh, mass ratio as uh, activators for the geopolymers. Um, then Marab did a lot of tests. Uh, he did a slump test, flow, flow table test, and he also looked at a, a L content um, density. And uh, he did a lot of mechanical tests, including compressive strength, display tensile modulus. He also looked at some durability uh, perspectives, such as uh, uh, ab abrasion resistant, um, electric resistivity. And finally, we did a shrinkage test, both free shrinkage and autogen shrinkage. We also did a ring test to evaluate the cracking potential of the concrete under restrained drying. Uh, now let's look at some results. Uh, fresh properties. Nothing very surprising. Uh, so as you can see, adding so the geopolymer system we list the geopolymer. So as you can see, geopolymer system has higher fresh uh, fresh L L void content compared to the uh, Portland cement based system. 
this is because of the nature of a gel polymer. You have a lot of liquid, more, much more liquid, so that's why you have a lot of uh, more L weight. And for the flowability within the mini slump and also uh, flow table, essentially uh, both systems are very flowable. And uh, as long as you do a good mix, mix design, uh, we do not expect any uh, workability issues uh, for this type of mixtures. Uh, then uh, he did a uh, density and also porosity and water absorption testing. Uh, so for the density, as you can see, geopolymer is a little bit uh, lightweighter, but just a little bit. That's because you have high porosity and also high water ratio, so that's why it, it, it makes sense. So he also did a porosity and a water absorption test. Uh, what he did, he did a three different curing condition. He did a, a so-called uh, uh, moist, he called it moist, so it's a 23 degrees Celsius and 100 right humidity. And he also put a sample in the oven and heat it at 110, and he, his reference is uh, just ambient environment, which we can consider it's 23 degrees Celsius and 50% right humidity. So after he killed all the specimen at three different conditions at 20 days, does it mean I'm running out of the time? Oh, okay, okay. I, I'm trying to start up. Okay, so uh, so essentially we found geopolymers had a higher porosity than OPC-based models, and the oven curing produced the dentist and microstructure for geopolymer, but for the not for the OPC. So um, for the for the abrasion test, adding glass powder uh, improves the abrasion resistance uh, a little bit. Uh, but we still need to do more tests. And for the uh, electric resistivity test, adding geopolymer-based uh, mixtures had a lower electric resistivity. That's because of the, you have more liquids, you have iron, more ions. Uh, for the stress test, I'm just doing it very quickly because I want to show you guys a shrinkage test, which I feel is more interesting. Uh, so basically, we can produce geopolymer uh, at a very high strength with glass powder, uh, and uh, but the modules will be lower than the conventional Portland cement based mortars. Uh, same for the split tensile strength, same the strength can be higher than conventional Portland cement based. All right, let's move to the shrinkage test. As you can see, geopolymer samples had a much higher shrinkage value. Uh, I mean, the free shrinkage uh, in terms of drying shrinkage or targeting shrinkage. Uh, that's, that is because of the high liquid ratio, and also we think the mixture is less stiffer, so the shrinkage value will be higher. And uh, I think the most interesting is that we, we did a ring test, so to see the cracking potential. So here are some uh, uh, sample preparation and some mechanism behind. Uh, so here are some results, as you can see, the samples uh, we produce all cracked at 23 degrees Celsius and 50% relative humidity. Uh, and I'm going to show you the results. We have different curves for each mixture. We did a four, a three uh, specimens, and I'm summarizing the uh, average cracking time. So, uh, so this uh, maybe figures to, uh, this picture is too overwhelming. So I just pick up some uh, cases for you guys to look at. So as you can see, we have different four different types of mixtures. Uh, the curve on the top is a geopolymer containing fly ash, and the second curve is portland cement base, but with 25% glass powder. And uh, the third curve is a uh, portland cement base, but 25% fly ash, and the last one is a geopolymer containing 50% uh, glass powder. As you can see, the pattern is significantly different between geopolymer and portland cement mortars. So for the Portland cement mortars, as you can see, you have a sudden drop and a, at about 10 to 12 days, which is very, uh, very normal. Uh, but for the geopolymer, you have a very, like it's not a very sudden, but a slight drop at the beginning, and it pick, picks, uh, picks up uh, strains at a later stage. So we actually had a confusion at the beginning. We did not know that first pit, first job was cracking actually. So we waited like until like 20, 20 a few days, but we never saw that sudden drop as a conventional motor did. Then we 
we run out of our patient because Mario he need to graduate. So we took the sample out and we found actually it did a crack. So that's very interesting. So it seems uh, geopolymer can hold a crack, like can hold a strain, even if it cracks. Then we don't know what happened. We tried to look at the literature review, but we did not find a lot of answers. Uh, here, by the way, here are some cracks, as you can see. The Portland cement concrete, the crack is a little bit narrow, but for the geopolymer, it's, it's actually much wider. And another interesting finding is at the top, it seems like drying faster, and the bottom is not that drying fast. We thought it's maybe the gravity of the water. Water tend to uh, go go down down because of the gravity gravity effect. So then I talk, talk to Marab and say, but probably geopolymer and the steel may have some chemical reaction. So then I asked him to do this test. So he just uh, cast some geopolymer sample on the steel plate, which is the same steel we use for to produce a ring. And uh, as you can see, there seems there's some chemical bond developing developed between geopolymer and the, and the steel. So if you I don't know if you are familiar with the ring test, the assumption is that at the inner surface of the steel we do not have any friction. So that's a basic assumption. However, it seems like the geopolymer develops some bonding between the the mixture and the steel. So that's why it can still hold it hold it straight, even though you have cracks on our surface. So that seems like uh, our preliminary explanation, but we still need to do a lot of uh, more tests to, to test uh, our assumption. Uh, all right, so I will draw my conclusions. Glass powder is an underutilized material that can be used as a partial replacement of OPC uh, or as a precursor for geopolymer. Um, and we can achieve very good strengths uh, and the shrinkage test showed that geopolymers have significant higher shrinkage strain values compared to uh, Portland cement based motors. And uh, we observed uh, very different cracking pa patterns uh, between the two binding systems. Um, although geopolymers cracked faster within one day, the ring still could hold a significant amount of strain after cracking. Uh, here are some. Uh, my references we cited for this presentation, and uh, if you have any questions, I'm feel free to ask. Thank you so much. Thank you